Hello everybody, how are you? Hello everybody, how are you? It is time to start our day, it is time to work and play. Hello everybody, how are you? Hi everyone, welcome back to Monday Morning Circle Time. What Monday is it? What month is it? Let's get in and find out some answers to these questions. First of all, it is the month of March. It's still the month of March. We have a couple weeks left to go. And it is Monday and the number is eight. It is Monday, March 8th. If today is Monday, do you know what yesterday was? Yesterday was Sunday and tomorrow will be Tuesday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. All right, since we have not changed our month, we have not changed our color or our shape. We are still looking at the oval shape, which is like a stretched out circle. This is an oval, but we are talking about the color green this month because next week is St. Patrick's Day. And on St. Patrick's Day, we wear green. So we'll talk about that more next week. Also, come back next Monday because we're going to do more with ovals and green on next Monday Morning Circle Time. But today, today we did change our letter. What letter is up behind me now? It's the letter V. Do you remember what was up there last week? Last week was the letter U. And let's take a look at the sign language. To make the letter U in sign language, we put our two fingers up straight in the air. Can you do that with me? That was the letter U. Guess how we make the letter V in sign language? You just take your fingers apart. Look, it even looks like a V. I could put this up by my letter and it looks exactly the same. That's the letter V in sign language and we're gonna look more at the letter V in a few moments. But we are also going to talk about our new number this week. Last week we talked about 15, which is one and five, standing right next door to each other. This week we go from 15 to 16. Just like we go from five to six, we go from 15 to 16. So that is our number this week. Okay, let's get right into it. Let's start writing our number and our letter and we will talk about some V words while we're doing that and we will count 16 of something together. Here is my V page. If you have a piece of paper that you can write on, why don't you grab that and something to write with. If you have your V page, you can grab that or just let me see those fingers because you can always just use your fingers and write in the air or on your table or floor. A V is kind of fun because it just goes down and back up. And I like to say it's going down the slide and up the slide. So always, most of the time, we start at the top of the letter. So I'm gonna put my marker that I'm using right here at the top of the V. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide down. And then it's like I'm climbing back up the slide. I go back up at an angle. You ready? Let's do it together. Well, let's, let's do it in the air together first with your, your finger. Put it up, slide down the slide, now march back up that slide. Let's do it again. Slide down the slide, back up the slide. Okay, let's put it at the top. Slide down the slide, back up the slide. Now you might've looked ahead. Did you notice that the lowercase v, exactly like the uppercase v, just shorter. One's taller, one's shorter. Can you do that with me? Taller, shorter, taller, shorter. All right, so we're gonna make it the same way. Put it at the top of the lowercase v, go down the slide, slide down the slide, back up the slide. Okay, so now this is where these lines become important. They help us to know how to make these V's on a piece of paper. So when we're making the uppercase V, we start up here at this top solid line, and we go down to the bottom solid line, and then we go back up there. So let's just start with that one, okay? We start at the top solid line. Put your pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you have right there. Slide down the slide till you get to the bottom line, and then stop. Now we are going to bounce back up the slide till we get back to that top line and stop. Notice when I wrote it here, I didn't go underneath here and I didn't go over that. I kept it between those lines. You wanna try it with me again? Put it on the top line, slide down to the bottom line, climb back up the top line. Let's do one more and then we'll try our lowercase. Put it on the top line, slide down to the bottom, back up to the top. Those are how many V's? One, two, three uppercase V's. Okay, the lowercase guy, like we said, taller, shorter, taller, shorter, he's shorter. So he doesn't start at the top line. He does the same exact thing, but he's gonna start right here in this middle dotted line. He only gets to use the bottom part of our lines. 
So we're going to put our pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you have on the middle part, the dotted line, and you slide down to the bottom and then you climb back up. He looks exactly like that one, just shorter. This time I don't go above the middle line and I still don't go below the bottom line. Let's do it a couple more times. You ready? Okay, put it on the dotted line, slide down to the bottom, back up to the dotted line. One more, slide down to the bottom, back up to the dotted. And like always, if your V is going above the line or if it's going below and you're still working on it, that's great. I am proud of you for trying it with me. You will get better each time you practice, but I'm really proud of you for trying it today. Good job. If you are finding V stuff with me, this is the uppercase and lowercase V that I found in the newspaper. And then I found a picture of hmm, broccoli and cauliflower. B -b broccoli, that starts with a B. Cauliflower starts with a C. How are these V words? Do you know what type of food broccoli and cauliflower are? They are vegetables. Can you say vegetables? Put your teeth on your lip and go It tickles a little, doesn't it? That's the sound that V makes, vegetables. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but first I need to put this up here. So let me get my glue. Where do you think I should put it today? Should I cover the V's? Next to it. <laughs> I think I'm going to put it right over here somewhere. It looks to me like it wants to go over here. So I'm going to make a little circle of glue. Don't need a whole bunch. And I'm going to put my vegetables on there. I have my upper and lower case that I traced and wrote. <clears throat> I have the upper and lower case that I cut out and a picture of vegetables. So that's our V. We'll talk more about some V words in a moment, but let's try writing our 16 first. There it is, 16, a one and a six standing close to each other. Remember, they have to be side by side for us to know there are 16. Otherwise, it's just a one and a six. So we've been writing the ones for a while. Okay, let's get ready. A one, you can just do a straight line down, or you can give it that little bit of a hat at the top and a base at the bottom. And mine has that, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace that here. I'm gonna go up a little slide and then straight down and across the bottom. That's my one for the 16. Now the 16 is one of those numbers that I think is a little trickier to write. I think sixes are harder to write. So if you don't get it the first time, remember, just keep practicing and you will get it. To make the 16, we start at the top over here and we curve, it curves up and around, goes straight down to the bottom and it bounces back up and closes off with a circle. So that part we can do, there's a circle at the bottom. It's this tricky top part that sometimes can confuse us. When I'm writing my 16 over here, I'm not gonna do the fancy one, I'm just gonna do the straight up and down. You can do it however you want. So I start at the top line and I stop at the bottom line. There's the one. Okay, now for the six, this is where I think it gets tricky trying to do it with the lines. You don't start at the top line, you start just below it. And then you go up to the top line, come down and around to the middle line and you close off your circle. That was a lot of steps. We'll practice it again, you ready? I'm gonna put some space between here. My one goes straight up and down. My six starts kind of below. It hits the top line and it bounces down. It hits the bottom line and bounces back up to the middle and closes its circle. Let's do it one more time, you ready? I'm gonna come down here. Straight line down. That part I got, that's the easy part. Okay, now my six. I put it in just under that line. I hit the line, I bounce down. I hit the line, I bounce up to the middle and I close off my circle. Good job, you guys. Again, I'm really proud of you for even trying it. Just keep practicing and you will get it. You really will. Okay, for my 16, I had to do it in groups because I don't have enough space to put my 16. So I had to break my 16 apart. You ready? We're gonna count it in groups and then we'll put them up. See if this looks familiar to you. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four shamrocks. Does this look familiar? Anything behind me there? Okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Here's another one. Five, six, seven, eight. Here's another one. Nine, 10, 11, 12. I need one more. 13, 14, 15, 16. I have 16 shamrocks, but if I tried to put a whole strip of shamrocks up here, it wouldn't fit. So I had to break it down into groups. How many groups of four did it take me to get to 16? One, two, three and four. 
four groups of four made 16. So now you guys, we have to try to figure out how we are gonna fit all of these on here, even with them broken apart. You ready? I might have to go up here. Let's maybe do one long ways here. Let's see if it'll stick. There's one. How about, uh, how about one here? I might have to cover up my words. I still have to get to, oh, there's my 16 that I cut out. I still have to get two more on here. Let's see, we might have to overlap a little. As long as we can see our 16, we'll count them one more time to make sure that I did it right. And our final one. Okay, let's see if I can make this stick. All right, you guys, will you help me count this one more time? I think we got it on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 shamrocks. They are all there. Pretty much taken up the whole page, but they are all there. Okay, let me flip this around. I want to turn my whole board because on the back side, we're going to do something together. Let me flip everything around here. I have some white paper here. We are going to do some painting together. So if it's okay with your grown up, if you want to go get some paint, you may do that. But don't get paintbrushes. Don't get Q-tips, don't get cotton balls. You don't even need your fingers. Well, you'll need your fingers, but we're not gonna paint with them. We're not gonna paint with toothbrushes. We're gonna paint with a V word that we're gonna look at in a second. A variety, variety is a V word of something that we're gonna paint with in a minute. What's this a picture of behind me before we move on? That is an instrument called a violin. That's a V word. Do you hear and feel that tickle? Violin. I said we are gonna paint with a variety. We are going to paint with various vegetables. Various vegetables are both V words. They are very fun to play with and to paint with. You wanna see what I have? I have, oh, just like in our picture, broccoli. And I have got just a little cauliflower guy, but it's nice because it's just got a nice handle for me to hold. I have, anybody know what this guy is? This is a green pepper that I have cut open and I'm gonna use this part of it to paint. I have a potato and I can do two things with my potato. I've got just where I cut them in half and there he is. I also have one where I, can you see how I did that? I carved what shape into them? Let me turn it that way. I carved a triangle, we'll do something with that. Let's see, I think I have one more vegetable, vegetable, but I have two of this vegetable and I will show you why. I have a piece of celery, and this one has got a lot of green leaves on the end that I'm gonna use. This guy didn't have any green leaves. We're gonna use him in a different way when we paint. So if it is okay with your grown up, go grab your smock, some paper, some paint, and some vegetables that you may paint with and come back and join me. All right, I'm gonna start painting. I can do this in a lot of different ways. I'm gonna start with my, uh, my leafy, my leafy celery here. I have a plate and I chose green paint because we are talking about green this month. And if you notice, most of my vegetables happen to be green. So I can take these leaves, dip them just like a paintbrush. And you can see they've got some paint on them. And then I can come over to my paper and I can actually brush the paint on. And I can start, to, ooh, I like how that kind of leaves a streak like that. I can just kind of brush it right through and get some more paint and I can just kind of myself a little bit of a background here. Let me do that again. I like this. This is going to be the background to my picture. I'm going to come this way now. I kind of wish I had chosen a second color. Maybe if you have more than one color, you can pick a second color to add to your painting. Okay, that's the background to my painting. Now I'm going to come through. Let's see what I want to use next. I think I'll use the celery again, but I'm going to use the other piece. Now this guy He's got kind of a unique shape. He's got kind of a U shape. So maybe I may need to cut some of this off. And if you need to do anything with your vegetables with a knife, make sure you let your grown up help you, okay? There, I cut off the extra and I'm gonna dip them into the paint. Let me show you what I'm doing. I just dip it into the paint and now I'm gonna come over and kind of like a stamper. Make sure I get enough paint on there. I'm going to stamp my U's. This is, whoops, he's not a flat U, but I can come and I can do that. I can do that. Now, speaking of stampers, I also have my green pepper. I can get that into my paint. Let's get him smushed around in my paint here, make sure he gets all covered. And let's see what he makes. I can put him, I can put him on there like that. I can make stamps out of them, or I could even continue to do this and do a little painting with them. 
What else? Let's see what the broccoli is going to do. This is a big piece of broccoli. Let me put this in my paint and I'm going to get them all covered. I'm going to need more paint. I'm going to get him all covered and let's see, should I stamp them or paint them or both? What do you think? I'm going to do both. Let's stamp first. You ready? There he goes. He makes a bigger stamp, doesn't he? And then also I can come and I can paint with him and I'll bet you, what do you think? Do you think my cauliflower is going to do the same thing? I'm going to get some more paint. I think my cauliflower would kind of do the same thing, wouldn't he? Let's get some more paint on here. Okay. Take my little piece of cauliflower, dip him in the paint. Let's see what he looks like when I put him on there. Oh, he gives me a nice kind of oval shape. Hey, I got a green oval for my cauliflower. That was good, wasn't it? And finally, I'm gonna take my potato that I carved the triangle and I'm gonna put the triangle right into the paint and let's see if that works. Let's see if I can get a triangle. Let's see up here. It worked. So you can take a potato. I cut mine in half and you can have your grown up carve anything you want to in there. And then you can have a stamper. I could also use, I'm gonna do one more triangle. I could also use the whole potato, couldn't I? I don't need to just use part. There's one more triangle, but now I'm gonna try this whole potato. I'm gonna smush them around through all my paint. That's what he looks like, and I'm going to stamp. And again, I kind of wish I had chosen two colors. It's up to you how many colors you choose and what you make. But there is my vegetable creation, all painted with vegetables today. So that is something you guys can go do. You can go practice your 16s, count 16 of something. What can you find around your house that adds up to 16 when you count it? Maybe you can go outside for a walk today and see if you can find 16 bushes somewhere, 16 birds in the sky. I'm starting to see ducks again. Maybe you can find 16 ducks in the water. See what you can find. And while you're walking around, look for V words. What can you find in your house or outside that starts with the letter V? And you can practice writing your V and maybe you can paint with some vegetables today. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. It was a lot of fun. I will see you Wednesday. Bye, everybody.